It's very easy to be intimidated by Fusion, whether you are a complete beginner or moving over from something like After Effects. But this video specifically, I'm going to frame around those who are coming to Fusion from After Effects. You might be asking yourself, where is my null layer? In After Effects, you could create what are called null layers. They are completely empty layers. They take up space on the timeline, but you can't see them. There's nothing there. But they're very useful for a wide variety of applications. You can parent any other layer to those to sort of like group them and modify them as a group or modify them in very specific ways. Like you could rotate around one specific point. But for anyone who is super used to using null layers in this video, I wanna show you uh, three specific approaches or tools inside Fusion that can give you um, some similar results. So let's hop into Fusion and let's get started. Boom, we are here in Fusion and I have some simple shapes for us. You see, we have this red rectangle, our green little circle here, and then a blue uh, squiggly line. And we also have this resolve logo. And this is for a very specific reason, um, because we're gonna build a, a simple node tree, but there is one foundational truth about Fusion I wanna get across. If I connect these uh, two shapes here uh, by taking the output of both of those, dragging them together, it creates this merge. And you can see that creates a merge with these two shapes on top of each other. But if I take this uh, logo here, you see it shows you the resolution, and this is a different aspect ratio um, than all of these other backgrounds. So if I connect this other background layer to this, uh, preview that merge, you see that shape goes off the edges. And that is because anytime you have a merge, anytime you have a node tree, it always looks to the background layer to set the uh, working aspect ratio and resolution. If I were to come into that merge and switch those inputs, which I will do using control T, you see now we get that uh, full resolution of that background node um, with the logo on top this time, but now it sort of uh, quote unquote, like correctly fits in the scene. But this is one of the big reasons why I always recommend um, bringing in a fresh background and just bringing down the alpha. So if you uh, preview that, you uh, effectively have this blank canvas. This is not the null, even though there's nothing here. This um, more accurately functions like a canvas. But here we can start showing off some cool stuff because if I were to take all these different shapes and just connect them uh, one after each other using merge layers, so they're layered up here, you could come into each of the merges and um, change the transform of these so they are just arrayed however you want, boom. Great. These are all in the scene together now, um, but they're each coming on their own merge. So they are closer to still um, separate things <laughs> in this scene. And here's a use case where previously you might have had to use uh, null layers. Say in this scene, I now want this blue shape and this green shape to rotate together, but not independently rotate. I don't want the blue shape to rotate and the green shape to rotate. I want them to rotate around the same point, like the center point for this blue shape. So I want the blue shape to rotate and the green shape to rotate more, but around it. You get what I'm going for. Without changing anything in the node tree now, that would be kind of hard. It might be a little easier because uh, we have this green circle, so it's hard to exactly tell rotation, obviously. But if I came into blue, like you could see that could rotate fine, um, but to get that green circle to rotate with it, um, we might also have to affect like the center or something else, that could get complicated. So I'm gonna select both of those um, with their merged layers. Um, select, hold, click and hold and press shift, drag that up. And you'll see now I'm effectively starting a new node. I'll actually bring that same empty background connected to that now. So now it is just these two shapes and I will take the output of that back to the output of the red. And now we have that red in there as well. So you see, we have split this tree. And importantly, that gives us um, this little pipe here where if we select this merge four and preview that, we just have these two objects together. So coming out of that merge four, we are going to create a transform node. I will add that in there. And then in that transform node, I'm going to move this pivot. I'm gonna zoom in the pivot will be this green X. It's very uh, hard to see, especially over that blue, but I'm gonna move that pivot down to a sort of central area on this blue shape. And now that pivot is very important for angle. Now watch this. This transform is acting upon everything that is coming into it, which is this scene. So if we move from previewing that to previewing this transform, nothing will change yet. But now on this transform, if I come into angle, if I adjust that, you see now that blue object is rotating and the green object is correctly sort of parented 
to that to rotate together. For a lot of people, this might be obvious, but this is a foundational lesson to learn working in nodes. You need to structure your node tree around the flexibility you want to use in your scene. A lot of times it can be very helpful to break apart node trees and have them starting in different sources versus um, sort of treating it like a layer, just having one layer merge on another layer, merge on another layer, and so on and so on. And even that pivot point uh, uses size as well. So it zooms from that location, which could be really useful. Okay, we're moving on and we're gonna talk about the very entry layer of expressions. Expressions are crazy. <laughs> but if you're coming from After Effects, you might be aware of the pick whip in After Effects on all the layers, you could just drag it somewhere else and pull in values. Um, the expression system in Fusion functions pretty similarly. I'm actually going to reconnect these merges now so they're all back in one place. So uh, we have all these different things happening in one scene and we'll see some of what we're working with. We're gonna take this merge three, which is the screen shape. I'm gonna click this little pin icon, which is super useful. Cause then if I click over to merge four, you'll see merge four comes up, but also in the inspector below that we have merge three. I'll make sure we have them pinned up both. And now what I will do, I'm gonna right click on the size name parameter for merge three and go to expression. That will give us this little bar where we can type in expression. And I've done um, some small videos on expressions, crazy powerful, I use them all the time, um, but but they can get pretty intense. But you see besides the area where, where you can type in, you do have this little plus icon. And if I click and hold that, I can drag that to any other parameters to um, sort of tie this size to that parameter. Um, so I can come up to the size of merge four and you'll see uh, it actually tells you the name of the node and the parameter on that. So if I come up to merge four and change the size, it will change the size for both of those at the same time. And all the other controls stay separate so I can like move this somewhere else, um, but they will both size up and down at the same time. A big reason expressions are flexible is because you then can type onto them. So I can come into that size and do something like divide by two. And now that green square will always have half of the size of this blue one. This is a big area for flexibility compared to what is coming next, uh, publishing and connecting. We'll actually use this exact same example. I will right click, go to remove expression, and I can come to this uh, size four now, right click and go to publish. You see, it will look like it sets a keyframe there, but if I go over the entirety of my timeline, it is always highlighted. But you might've noticed that up here next to tools, we now have this modifiers button enabled. I can click that. And you can see that merge for size uh, now comes up as a modifier with its own value here. So we have effectively moved control for that size parameter out of that individual node and into a modifier. And that opens up tons of different options. You can always keyframe this here, but I can come back to that merge three, come to size, right click and go to connect to merge for size because that is a parameter we have previously published. I'll click size. And you see, hey, check this out. They have that exact same value. And if I go back to modifiers, I can pull up or down that value and it will affect both of those. Now there are absolutely pros and cons. You see here, because both of those two size parameters are directly connected to this value, you don't have that option like I showed off earlier to sort of like, uh, type in or affect that individually for each of them. Both of these is always going to be the exact same number, but there is one potentially pretty massive benefit to publishing and connecting, especially when you really dive into building uh, complex effects or especially building your own presets and templates um, for when you use them back in Fusion or over on the edit page. You see the way that expressions work, um, Fusion is thinking, hey, every new frame, I know there is an expression on this parameter. So I need to go look at that expression, look at what nodes it's pointing, and then check to see if anything has changed since last frame. Computers are very good at thinking, um, but every time you put an expression, that is just something that your composition has to look at and update every frame, potentially slowing down your effect. When you use the publishing and connecting system, that same dynamic uh, doesn't exist. Because when I connected the size of this to that other parameter, it isn't sort of like adding a gateway after the fact to be like, hey, look at this number, use that number. It's saying, okay, sort of rewrite this parameter. So it doesn't use its own setting, it uses the uh, published value. It's a little complicated, but when possible, and depending on how much flexibility you need, publishing and connecting um, is really, really cool. And you can even use it with some of the other features we've previously shown off to get a little bit more of that flexibility back. Coming out of this background, just this blue shape, if I create a transform node before we get to that merge, 
and pull the size down by half. Then if I come back to merge three and come to that modifier, change that value, we have effectively cut down the size of this blue shape by half before it gets to that merge value. So now this one value is driving both of them, but to a different extent. So all of these systems can work hand in hand. This value here inside um, this published value, you can always right click on there and add an expression. The possibilities are pretty endless and all of these different systems and more systems in Fusion, you can constantly layer on top of each other in new and innovative ways. Um, that's part of the reason Fusion is so exciting. One more thing I want to get across. We have only used these expressions and uh, publishing and connecting between the same parameters on these different nodes, but you don't need to. Very quickly on this uh, merge four, let me right click on center. I'm going to modify with X, Y path hop over to modifiers. And this is just a super easy way to separate these X and Y parameters. Like you might do in After Effects all the time, right click, separate dimensions. I did that all the time. This is super simple, add an X, Y path. And then now I have just this Y position here. And yeah, we're even gonna do this within the same node. So I am just in this merge four, and I am going to uh, uncheck these both because uh, they still function the same. I don't know why it automatically says those, but I'm going to right click on Y and go to expression. And what you need to know for what I'm about to do to make sense is that inside Fusion by default, it has a really cool coordinate system. You can change it and set it up so it uses like actual like, pixel values and stuff, but by default, um, all coordinates in your scene are set up so the center of your composition is always 0.5x, 0.5y, um, with this first corner here being 0, 0, this corner up here being 1, 1, and then it all works out. So 0 to 1, left, right, 0 to 1, bottom to top. So for my y value, I'm going to click and hold this little uh, plus arrow, mouse over tools here, which will kick me back to the tools page, and I'm going to connect that to size. I will let go. And now you can see as I go back to size, um, size, of course, you can always go larger to one. So it'll move it completely off screen. But you can see I can drag this. So now the smaller it is, it gets towards the bottom of the screen. And the larger it is, it gets towards the top of the screen. And this is just within the same node, but you could do this um, with any number of nodes. You can rig up some really cool stuff here. But again, you need to understand a lot of core concepts like that coordinate system. And at that point, you are just dealing with raw numbers. And if you can figure out how one scale of numbers connects to another scale of numbers or how um, the scale on one parameter would look on the scale of another, it gets exciting. I hope this has sparked a lot of creativity and you want to jump into Fusion and get started. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.